we should probably tune this off, actually. Alright. Ah. You know, it's that time of year. Autumn has finally come. That means that the wonderful New England air has turned nice, crisp, cool uh, smell. And it's, and it's a really wonderful smell, too, if you're not from here, which is why it's the perfect opportunity for me to get a cold and not be able to smell anything. So that's great. It's been a little while since the last flea market video, and uh, I want to apologize, but I've been a little, I've been, well, last week I was out of town. Uh, I was, I don't know if you can see this. At Smash Camp. And I visited friends and it was a lot of fun. And uh, if you're ever, if you're interested in like competitive Smash or whatever, uh, definitely go out and check that, uh, check out Smash Camp whenever it happens because it's a lot of fun. But, um, so, so yeah, I was, I was in Arizona last weekend, which is why I didn't go to the flea market and also didn't make a flea market video. And the week before that, I did go to the flea market, but I didn't really get a lot of stuff. Which is why today, I'm just gonna do a two for one. So this is a bit of there's a bit of a backlog on this one. So we're just gonna kind of get right into it. And I'm gonna start with what I got uh, a few weeks ago. Let me just grab it all. Yes. All right. So here it is. It it was just records. And uh, I want to start with the first thing I got, and it was um, it was an album called Carousel by uh, by the Fly Seville. I think I'm I think I'm pronouncing that right, Seville. Um, I noticed this in like a recent arrivals bin of one of the record vendors, and um, it's it says right here limited edition indie rock, three hundred copies. I was like indie rock. I like indie rock and uh, I noticed on the back that it was recorded in 1999 so we're we're dealing with late 90s indie rock so I was like sure well I mean it's, it was five bucks too so can't really go wrong with that but um I'm glad I'm actually doing this I'm doing this uh now instead of as soon as I got it because I got a chance to listen to this album yesterday and it's actually really good uh it's not like it's not like a like a hidden masterpiece or anything but it's if you like late 90s indie rock you should definitely listen to carousel by the fly seville it's on spotify so you don't need to go and find a a vinyl record at the flea market uh and uh, uh like i said earlier it's one of 300 copies that were produced and uh, you can kind of see on the back that in, this is either a 94 or 194 i the zero i, I think it's a zero but it kind of screws me up because it's got a little a little slash like so so yeah this is copy number 94 and um the fly seville seemed to be from massachusetts so this record didn't really get that far until landing in my hands so you know that's interesting and also great record and then we got, uh, I got this from the same guy. And this is also pretty interesting. I haven't listened to this yet, though. It's, um, it's issue number seven of Debut Magazine. And what's interesting about this is it's not just, it's not just a magazine. It also comes with, like, a, a compilation disc of, well, a compilation disc of certain bands that are, are interviewed or whatever on the magazine. I got it because um because the Stranglers are on the front and uh, I've been meaning to get into them. But um there's also some other some other groups like the Cult, uh Jules Holland is on here. Um the rest I'm not as uh as well versed in, but I know I know who Jules Holland is cuz he has that Don't mind that, that's my phone. He has that talk show uh where he gets like musical guests on and stuff but um if you didn't know he had a band before that but yeah no this is like actually really cool it's it's got 
articles and everything and it says the price is like yeah a monthly price of three euros or three pounds that's pounds i think which is pretty cheap i paid um i paid seven bucks for this i think yeah seven bucks i, I think it was half off so uh forgive me if i don't remember this it's been it's been a few weeks but pretty cool nonetheless yeah this was a this is a really cool grab i wouldn't uh i think it'd be cool to find more of these just um just to see what else they had on it's a english it's an english uh magazine so it's mostly going to be like british bands but you know the brits have some good bands and the last two things i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna show this one first it's uh this is uh otis redding live in europe otis redding i um i've known for a really long time He's just, he's just a really great singer. He's a lot of soul. And, uh, oh, this is cool. I didn't notice this. Uh, this might not show up on the camera well, but it's got, like, the Atlantic logo kind of in the, the jacket. But, yeah, it's, it was one of his live performances. Otis, uh, if you don't know who Otis Redding is, he's, um, he's, like, a, a 60s sort of, uh, I want to say soul. Kind of, like, soul, kind of, like, jazz singer. Uh, I feel like I'm getting that wrong. You know, he covered like um he covered like respect and uh like satisfaction and stuff. But you know, he has his, he has original songs as well. Maybe I, I think Sitting on the Dock of the Bay is pretty um pretty popular. But um that was also his last song because he died in uh he died in a plane crash. I think he's part of the twenty seven club. And uh yeah, he um he was he was getting pretty big or he was getting really big and uh, unfortunately his career and his life was cut short which is a real tragedy but what he's what what he gave us in the meantime was was really great and this is actually all the otis writing i have i would really like to have more and finally from the last uh from the earlier flea market excursion this is at this might be my second favorite thing. My favorite thing that I got is definitely the Fly Seville, cause uh, cause it's just a great album. Um, but this is the "Don't Be a Menace" the South Central while drinking your juice in the hood soundtrack. And uh, I haven't seen this movie in years, so I don't know if it holds up. But the soundtrack is, <laughs> I just kind of just had to get it because you know it's got Little Bud and stuff. It's got Lil Kim, R. Kelly. Well, we don't talk about that guy. Does it say it says Ghostface Killer? Is that different from Ghostface Killer? No, it's not. Yeah, so the first track on the album is performed by Ghostface Killer, Master Killer, You God, Raekwon, and Cappadonna. That's like half of Wu Tang Clan, and Cappadonna if you want to count him. So yeah, um, funny, funny movie, cool soundtrack. Happy to have it. It's even in the original shrink wrap, so it's got. It's got like the hype sticker and stuff. I think I paid like five bucks for this and the Otis Redding, so ten bucks total. Um, not amazing prices, but um, uh, not bad uh, by any means because they're in pretty good condition. And so that's that's the stuff I got uh, like a few weeks ago. Let's get to the stuff I got this week. And I'm gonna start. It's kind of out of order, but I'm gonna start with um this i got is uh is april 91 issue of um electronic gaming monthly it's the 21st uh issue it, it some this guy the guy selling it was like some old dude who always sets up like four tarps sorry always sets up like four tarps and just like full of like magazines and stuff and he just had an egm lying around and uh i think i don't i don't remember if i said this I must. I I feel like I said this in an older flea market video, but I I don't really want to get deep into collecting, deep into collecting like magazines and stuff because that's gonna take up a lot of space. But the the scant EGM Game Informer Nintendo Power here and there isn't gonna hurt anyone. This is actually a pretty cool issue because the um the Genesis was I mean the Genesis was already out in full force, but 
excuse me, uh, the Super Nintendo wasn't out yet. And uh, it'd be a few more months before it came out in the States. So it, it was out in Japan by this point, but not in the, not in the U.S. So they talk about games like Act Razor on here, in here, and um, talk about how it's like, how it's like a, it's like a killer app for for the Super Nintendo, or so they hear. Actually, I remember looking at the reviews in here on the way on the car ride back, and uh, oh, here's something cool actually, and sort of topical. There's a there's an ad for Metal Storm. Uh, Metal Storm is like a pretty. Uh, pretty cool late uh, NES era uh, action platformer and um, some some website I don't remember which website but they 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 recently reprinted it so um so in, unless you want in, if you don't want to pay like an arm and a leg for a copy of this game because I'm pretty sure it's rare you can get a you can get the new pressing of metal storm pressing I guess I guess it's a pressing right no reprinting I guess would be better term the new reprinting of metal storm uh it's a good game you should you should give it a try i'm trying to find i'm gonna find this review yeah they get yeah i remember this they gave star tropics pretty shitty ratings uh let's see steve gave it a four ed gave it a six martin gave it a five suit sushiks oh sushi okay sushi x okay uh, he gave uh, Sushi X gave it a four, so not really great scores. I've personally never played Star Tropics. I've only heard people talk about how much they like it. So, for such low scores like that, it's pretty kind of a bummer. But I mean, I I've never played the game, so I couldn't really, I couldn't really tell you if it's something worthwhile. Maybe someday, you know. Did you play this? whatever uh it's kind of hard to put back in the plastic case it came with because the binding is kind of screwed up it's not it's not in the best condition i only paid two bucks for it so you know you, you take what you can get and then i also got from my regular video game guys i got Star Fox adventures for like 13 bucks Star Fox adventures is a game i actually don't want to say too much about um for reasons <laughs> maybe someday oh fuck <laughs> oh that's gonna sound really shitty i'll edit it don't worry you know i'm good for it anyway yeah star fox adventures um basically what i will say is that it's a game that wasn't exactly received well when it came out that um was uh it was pretty much rare's last nintendo game and depending on how you look at it, look at it that's it's not a very um it's not the best it was it wasn't their uh their best showing but nonetheless nonetheless i still kind of like the game and that's all i'll say about it and now the rest are records. <laughs> you know, I was actually thinking about this when I, uh, on the ride home from the flea market, just like how many people do you think, and I'm sure this isn't a lot, but how many people like stumble onto from my channel, from the main channel, find out that I have like a flea market or have like a vlog series where I talk about stuff I get at the flea market and <laughs> they're like, oh, I wonder what cool retro games and stuff this guy picks up. And it just turns out that I mostly, it turns out I also collect records, so it's like, okay. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I got some good records this week. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with what I got. First up is Billy Ocean, Tear Down These Walls. I, um, I have Billy Ocean Suddenly, which has a Caribbean Queen on it. It's a nice, um, it's a nice pop album. It's kind of like smooth. It really it goes down really smooth, and I saw this. I saw this in some guy's crate, and I was like, "Well, is this the album with Get Out of My Dreams and Into My Car?" And it is. So I was like, "Okay, two bucks, easy." 
It was it was the easiest bat of buy of my life. If the rest of the album sucks, it doesn't matter because it's got out of my dreams and into my car. Get in the back seat, baby. Yeah. The sleeve isn't in the best condition. But you ha you kind of you kind of have to accept that when you're going to the flea market and um and you're looking through like people's old collections cuz though though I mean there will be people that like resell records or like in like the business and I don't mean resell in like the shitty way just like people who you know that's just what they do. But like you know you get people's old collections they didn't really take care of them as well. So it's a give or take. Um, next is, um, is, uh, Depeche Mode 12 inch single. Um, fans of flea market pickups will know that I got that it's because of the flea market. I finally decided to start listening to Depeche Mode and I've really liked them since, um, I haven't done a deep, deep dive, but uh, the albums I've listened to, I've liked a lot. And that's Playing the Angel, me, uh, Music for the Masses, and um, Violator. Uh, all great records. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of them on vinyl. It's really it's really hard to find Depeche Mode at the flea market. The, on, the only guy who has any, he only has singles. And that's how I got that last single from uh, months ago. I do have... Um, their second album, A Broken Frame, I actually found, I actually went to a, a Bull Moose the same day as that flea market pickups and found it there for like 10 bucks, uh, which I thought was a pretty, it was poetic, really. And uh, that album's okay. Uh, it, it, it's, it's their earlier stuff, so it's not as like dark and moody, but it's still pretty good. And um, People Are People, this is from 84. So this... This is still, like, kind of before they got, like, really, really goth, I think. But nonetheless, it was it was um in the 3 for 25 bin, 10 each. Um, I'll tell you what the total price is for a, a big stack of these records, because I got a good deal. But for now, keep that in mind. Next up is um, uh, In Excess Swing. Uh, in Excess... You know, uh, 80s new wave band, just another band that I would like to hear more of. I honestly don't know any of the songs on this album, but once again, it was in the $10 bin. So I figured I'd try to get three for 10. And I was like, I, I know of In Excess, so I would like to know more about In Excess. And then the last, the last one from the, um, from the 10, the the three for twenty five was um, all the things she said extended version, a uh, twelve inch single by Simple Minds, but that's not the reason I got this. I got this because it, the B side is "Don't You Forget About Me" live, so I considered that worth it. Simple Minds support the Amnesty International organization. Interesting. Okay. Produced by Bob Clear Mountain. That's a guy you, you hear a lot of. He's a pretty famous producer from back then. So this is cool. I hear a sneeze. I feel a sneeze coming on. Hang on. <coughs> uh, Jesus. Sorry you had to see that. Uh, ooh, I forgot, I, I forgot about this. So this is the Tom Tom Club. Um... Uh, what the hell is the album name? Oh, it's just it's just self titled. The so the Tom Tom Club is a side project from a couple of members of um of Talking Heads. Uh, you may know one of their songs because in in um Stop Making Sense they play Genius of Love. That's actually a Tom Tom Club song. So I was like. You know, I'll, I'll just go pick it up because uh, I'll get it just for that song because I like it a lot. And uh, I've been meaning to get more into Talking Heads. So why not get the Tom Tom Club while, while it's staring me in the face? Uh, it's still got the shrink wrap. I honestly, I honestly don't like it when albums have the shrink wrap on them still. It just feels like off. 
So I might I might rip the shrink wrap off of this. The only the only time I'll make an exception is if there's a if there's a hype sticker still on it. That's how I can justify keeping the shrink wrap on. So is that the yeah, okay. So the final the final record I got from this stack was uh sorry, felt a scratch. Uh was speaking of shrink wrap and uh hype stickers this is u2's actung baby it's um i believe this is from 91 right yeah their 91 record this is kind of uh from what i'm aware of u2 i mean i like i like mysterious ways uh and like some u2 but this is kind of like the cutoff for a lot of people where it's like after this point don't just don't don't bother with you two but this album is apparently really good and um i don't know if you can see this but it says 55 bucks on here i did not pay 50, 55 bucks for this uh it's getting near the end of the flea market season so a lot of the vendors are kind of trying to just are trying to, to sell as much of their stock as they can. And uh, for this entire stack, the Depeche Mode, the Simple Minds, the NXS, the TomTom Tom Club, and the U2, um, I paid 65 bucks, And uh, that's a pretty good deal, considering this U2 album is going for, going for about... Uh, going for about like 70 bucks or something on discogs depending on the, the condition it's in it says on the sticker that this is near mint and um for the vinyl i would agree uh the jacket or the yeah the outer jacket kind of it's a little bent near here which isn't isn't the best but uh but i mean honestly the music is probably a little more important and uh, I don't know, I don't know if I'm really even gonna part with this for a while, because you know I don't I'm not really in the game of like flipping records. It's just nice to like find an album, and be like, oh, this is I actually got a really good deal on this. It's just uh, it it just flares up my lizard brain. So yeah, sixty five for all these records, pretty good deal. But uh, uh the deals didn't end there. Because some guy was selling, was also selling records. I, I think just like personal collection stuff and stuff he picked up from, from like other people at the flea market. So I got um, uh, Ocular Spectacular uh, by MGMT. You know, it's it's the album with like electric feel and kids and time to pretend. And uh, I paid. I was I I think I saw like another vendor at the flea market selling this. So I half. So when I saw in this uh, saw in this other guy's bin, I assumed I assumed he bought it for the sole intent of flipping it. So I thought he would knew what the price was on this thing. Uh and at the time I didn't know what the how, what what the going rate for this like record is. But um so I like asked him what he wanted on this and he was like he was like, "Oh, I have no clue who this is. Uh would you do 5?" And I was like, "I'll do 5." Uh, and this record's going for about like 20 bucks or something on Discog. Ooh, that's that's screwing with my face. Yeah. So, yeah, MGMT, you know, I know the hits, right? This is, uh, it, it's just, you know, I wouldn't, for, for five bucks, I wasn't going to pass it up. In fact, there were a few other records I saw in there that I probably should have grabbed after he told me the price of the MGMT, but I was kind of I was kind of run low in funds at that point. I didn't really wanna, I didn't really wanna go super insane. But I'm happy. I'm happy that I managed to get a pretty good price on this thing. And uh, that's that's pretty much everything I got at the flea market. I. Uh, I don't have, I'm not going to show this on camera because I gave it to my mom, but I got a, I bought a piece of the Berlin wall. It was like in like a little plastic case with like a tag and for about five bucks, I gave it to my mom because uh, she, she likes that kind of stuff. 
And that's everything I got at the flea market, I'm pretty sure. Overall, really great haul. I mean, I'm a... Uh, I'm happy with what, I, with what I got. I feel like there's maybe one good, one more, one more, um, one more haul like this in in the flea market before it closes in like November, or so. It might be smaller ones from here on out. But then again, I'm not sure. Hopefully, um, hopefully, there is more stuff. But if not, that's fine. Uh, over over this year, uh, I've gotten some really good stuff at the flea market. I can't really complain. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these vlogs have been a lot of fun to do. Just kind of talk about the things I got is, uh, I don't want to say therapeutic, but it is nice. And I think that that's where I'm going to call it because I'm really rambling at this point. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you later.